addition to the allotment. It's not small. another unbelievable freebie arrives on the allotment <laughs> thank you very much to ray and debbie who have donated this to us because it was far too big for ray's garden and now chaps we have a fire pit two swing seats a barbecue all we need is a bar up here really isn't it <laughs> anyway while i'm up here this morning i'm going to pot up some of these chard so i could put them straight out of these pots into the ground but i just want to give them the best start that I possibly can because you know how I feel about chard. I've got three varieties. I've got the peppermint, the Lucullus and the Verda de Taglia. And I'm gonna take the best out of these seed trays and just put them into their own individual pots, give them a bit of time to adjust. Then I'll get them out into the cold frame and then we'll get them out into the beds. But I'm just giving them the best start I possibly can. is actually all we came up here to do today and it's done i'm going to pick some sage before we go home so i will see you again when the sun's out weather is supposed to have improved today so I'm going to take some seed I don't know if I'll get time to sow them today but I'm going to take some seed up with me anyway and one of the things I need to sow is beetroot and I'm just trying to remember what it was that I've just put out and what I sowed what varieties it was it wasn't solo f1 I'm pretty sure we had the golden one we had some of them in there definitely we had Egyptian Crosby's Egyptian yeah and then I think we also had uh Kyokia, you know the stripey the candy stripes one which should be in here somewhere. There it is, lovely. So I might not get time to sew them today, but I'm definitely gonna take them up with me because at least if they're in the shed, <laughs> then I can do them when I go up there. Now, please don't judge me for the state of this uh, salad tray of seed because yes, there is a ghastly amount of seed in here, but I'm just looking for rocket. <laughs> I'm just looking for rocket. Where is it? That'll do, lovely. Got to get some of that in. Then I'm just going to put these away and not think about the state of all of those seeds. <laughs> I'm also going to take some spring onions with me. Um, I've got some quite exciting onions in here actually, but most of them are going to be to try next year. So that is pretty good. Those ones, I've got some walking onions. Okay, I'll take 
uh, Holland Blood Red. That's a good standard one. And I just want a plain white one. What have we got in here? Nipper I've already sewn. That looks like a plain white spring onion. Who have we got? Evergreen Bunching. Sounds good to me. Right, that is the set I'm taking with me. Let's go up the allotment. Hello, coming back. Come on, Bonnie Rabbit. Come on. Come on, Sauce. Come on, here we go. I can't hold him aubergines. I can't. Uh... First priority of this magnificent morning is get these brassicas in to the bed that I've moved the brassica cage on so I'm going to have to get in there. I've got some spinach um, kind of growing in there which has been growing all over winter actually uh, and I need to move it out and I've got another bit of spinach which had a bit of sporadic germination in another bed so I'm just going to transplant that spinach into the other bed so all the spinach is you know together <laughs> um, and then I've got to mulch that bed and then I'm going to get the brassicas in there not including the kohlrabi because that's going in the other bed but yeah look at these chaps i mean they look really healthy but they are very very much ready to get out of this little tiny polystyrene tray look at the roots so these are actually a different type of spinach than i've got in the other bed they are uh, called Americana and they are a wonderful, wonderful spinach. Just ignoring the fact that this one has got a weed growing up through the center of it. These leaves with these beautiful, really thick but hollow stems, this is an absolute gem. This one's done really well. These chaps, I mean, these guys, they survived through that minus eight we had. So I think I'm definitely gonna be getting some of these in again for next year for over winter. Yeah, I'm well impressed with them and, and they taste wonderful. So these ones are coming out of here and they're going to go up in the bed that has the broad beans on. I really need to lift this netting up a bit. They've got, they've got so tall so quickly. But just here on the side, this is where I have got the other spinach growing. Now, unfortunately, I said, well, I said earlier that they had poor germination. They didn't actually have that poor germination. They've firstly been very, very slow. You see these ones are only just coming up now, whereas these ones are quite well advanced. Up that end, this was a complete row, this one, um, but that end, for some reason, they all just got eaten off, only from one end. So I'm gonna plonk those ones from that other bed into the end there where I know that they have already germinated and just been eaten. <laughs>
Okay, well in that lot, we've got the one Brussels sprout. Uh, I've got four Cavalanero to go in and also uh, Kalex. So I'm going for all tall things in here because the cage is so high. I mean, obviously this is meant to be the perennial brassica bed, but we lost our perennial brassicas, which is actually what mum's just chopping up right now. <laughs> so it, we don't have any perennial brassicas to go in there. So I'm going for tall, which is the next best use of the cage. And this is actually the remnants of what was our nine star perennial cauliflowers. Most of them died completely and we have taken them out and removed them. Mum's been chopping them up and putting them in this bag. But these two on this end actually have some new growth from the bottom, which we're going to save. So I'm just chopping off the top section and we will attempt to keep those alive and try and encourage them to turn into full size nine stars again. And that is the single solitary Brussels sprout in. The four extra Cavallonero that I couldn't fit in the other bed are in. And then also in this bed, we have got Kalets and Calibos cabbages. Fantastic. I haven't used all of these. I will offer anything that I've got left over in this tray to plot neighbors, but if they're not keen, I will just plonk them in the flower bed somewhere and use them as uh, treats for the girlies. So nothing will be wasted. And next up are the kohlrabi. They're going to go into this mixed bed. They don't get very tall, so they don't need a great high bit of protection like the cage. They're going to go in here with the lettuces and the beetroot and the spring onions. So it's all a bit of a mixed bag, this one. You notice like last week, this white stuff that I'm putting in the holes for all the brassicas is the lime in order to try and stave off the club root. Club root is actually a fungal problem that lives in the soil. And if you've got it, it's just gonna be kind of prevalent across your soil, which we have on this plot, unfortunately, but it prefers acidic soil. And so by adding the lime into the planting holes of these, I'm hoping that it's raising the pH within like the immediate growing area of the brassicas and that that will hold off the club root. That is the idea anyway. Okay, we are actually gonna try something quite exciting chaps so you know the very early potatoes that we've been growing in pots in the greenhouse have i got mud all over my face <laughs> probably um we're going to turf one of the potatoes out and see if there's anything in there because they're flowering um just be aware it's possible there will be nothing and this will be one of those situations a bit like the sweet potatoes do you remember that all the excitement we got oh <laughs> i was gonna swear then YouTube doesn't like swearing. Okay, are you ready? Ma I just wanted to, <laughs> mum is so excited about the prospect of potatoes. So that's partly, she's been asking, are we gonna do the potatoes today? Are we gonna do the potatoes today? And today I have acquiesced, we are going to do the potatoes. <laughs> hey mum, you're excited, aren't you? I am very excited. <laughs> okay, been watered very much so I have to occasionally too dry, do they? No. I always lift it back in because there's nothing there. Oh, wow, where are they? 
not going to eat too much of that, are we? Right, there's something. Oh, no, no we've got dinner. we got a dinner there, Jesse. Not short on ants, though. We've got more in there, I just got to. And that's the original. Oh, that's all right. That's, dinner. that's not bad. That's dinner. <laughs> we need to feed up the other ones now yes, and okay. give them a good water. Yep. And uh, right, that's okay. all right. Okay, so it is not uh, the biggest feed in the world, but uh, the compost can be reused and also uh, it was just space we weren't using. So I've got ants all over me. <sighs> so yeah. A bit of dinner. I'm not unhappy with that. And look at the colour of them. Okay, it is not an enormous haul, but there was only one potato in that pot. And uh, it was a bit of an experiment. And I think, oh, I've dropped one. I think that's pretty jolly. What a day. 
after the uh, grey and rain that we've had the last couple of days, actually, I will talk to you about grey in just a moment. Uh, this is glorious. Hey, Lil. Pussycat. Pussycat, 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 pussycat. Sky. So we were actually up here yesterday and got quite a lot done, but in terms of recording, we had some shall I just say sound issues? <laughs> so first off the weather, right? This was me whinging about the state of the weather early in the day before all the noise happened. Good morning. We have hung around all day because the forecast today was gray in the morning and then about like one o'clock, just like full suns. In fact, I will show you what the forecast says it's supposed to be like right now, because I can tell you, It's not. <laughs> I've got to say grey weather is one thing, like you can put up with grey weather, but when it's grey weather and you're looking at the forecast and it's meant to be perfect sunshine, it just makes it that little bit greyer. <laughs> but yeah, so that's when the sound issue started. So we started off with flow. Anyway, oh, we've just had an egg laid. That's why she's, <laughs> please excuse the screaming mad woman in the chicken house. Hmm? What? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so we had a lot to do today. In fact, we've still got a lot to do today. Um, but I tell you, but I tell you what, uh, you know, only a couple of weeks ago, only a couple of weeks ago, I said uh, that we had to mow all the paths. No, will you shut up though? <laughs> um, okay, I think she's jumped down now. She'll be all right. No, she won't. Uh, basically, I gotta mow the past before we do anything else. Um, depending on how much we've got, I don't know whether it's gonna be able to be eaten now. Will you be quiet? <laughs> so yeah, after that, after her squawking through everything I was trying to do, which is fine, like that's allotment noises, I'll be all right with that. But from that point on, we had a succession of strimmers, aeroplanes, helicopters, and then in the school next door, the dance troupe came out to do their practice, which is all like, blaring music and kids screaming and shouting and doing dance routines um which is annoying to listen to but I mean it's not it's not the worst thing in the world it's not like last year when they were practicing um that play and they just kept shouting off with their head I mean it was it was all right to listen to but I can't use any of the sound from it because Google will give me a content ID claim because it's like commercial music <laughs> so I had to cut all of that out anyway it was an interesting day in terms of filming that's not oh that was Lily deciding to use my tripod as a scratching post. Excellent choice, girly whirly. <sighs> anyway, we, despite the sound issues, we did actually get quite a lot done. And what did we start off with? Oh yeah, because we've had all this like mixed sun, rain, sun, rain, sun, rain, the grass had gone mental. So mum and I kicked off with doing the paths and then we went straight on and tackled the Cavalanero bed. So yeah, let me take you back in the mists of time.
Doesn't that look better? Right, we can get on with some real work now. Hey girlies. Back on with the infinite list. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to do the Cabo Nero next though. out the Cavalanero and uh, I'm well pleased with these roots so I've said before that we have a real problem with club root on this plot which what happens is that they turn into the brassica roots turn into a real gnarly mess like a club basically um, and these are looking really fantastic and I really heavily limed this bed when I was planting these out last time I don't know if you remember you would have been with me <laughs> um, but yeah I put a lot of lime in a bit like I have been doing uh, this time round when I've just been planting out the new stuff and that actually looks like a proper root ball um, if I find any club root when I'm digging out the rest of the stuff I'll show you what I mean because it's really obvious when you've got it and they sort of you just basically when you pull the thing out it's got none of this none of this feathery fibery root going it's just like a gnarled ball underneath but like a turnip that's that's gone wrong um, yeah so really quite happy with that Fingers crossed, the lime, oh, I just dropped it. <laughs> Fingers crossed, the lime works again this year. see I decided to leave some of these with the flowers on because the bees absolutely adore them but the most exciting thing was this this was a plant that was just in amongst I planted out at the same time as the others but it sort of didn't do anything it just sat there looking puny and now all the others have finished their their time uh, this one is coming into its own so we've got a whole new fresh flush of Cavalanero which is incredibly exciting why hey today <laughs> and uh, so the last couple of days we have uh, been up here a lot but not got the things that were on my original list at the beginning of the week done so I've got a lot of sewing to do today I've got to plant out those zinnias oh we've got a lot of things to do and it's a beautiful beautiful day so I'm really looking forward to it and it's actually quite early so we've got a long one ahead of us perfect what am I going to start with a cup of coffee or am I going to get straight in Across. <laughs> They've just been having a right ruckus in the tree above it. But there's 
And back to the clearing and mulching campaign. <laughs> And I'm just gonna throw this in there before somebody tells me that I'm cutting my bags wrong. Uh, I'm doing them this way along the edge because it makes it easier to tip out and I've got a niggle in my back at the moment and I don't wanna make it worse by having to tip up the compost, you know, with its full weight at the other end. I know it means that the bags are not reusable as upright bags, but we do still use them to line things. I uh, just thought I'd get that in there before somebody, <laughs> before somebody tells me I'm doing it wrong. This might not be one of the most exciting jobs around, although to be fair, at the end, it does look very satisfying. But it has actually been one of the most important things that we do to maintain any kind of soil condition on our site because we've got this incredibly poor, sandy, free draining soil. And just by putting this mulch on every year, or once a year at least, some beds we've put it on twice a year a couple of times, it's just made the most enormous difference to the moisture retention and the nutrient retention of the soil. So what we use is a well-rotted horse manure. We just hoe off any weeds underneath, uh, take away the really big ones, obviously, but all the rest of it, mulch on top and leave it plant through that. The mulch is normally about two, three inches thick. And yeah, it basically just has transformed our plot. Cool, blimey, that is satisfying. So those little ends, they have definitely survived. And look, we've got, I mean, it's hardly the uh, harvest that we had last year, but it is something. I'm hoping these chaps are gonna survive. So that's pretty exciting. I might take them home today. I might take you home today. So nice, a mulched bed, a mulched bed. It's an absolute peak. <laughs> uh, so I've got two more bags of compost that I can use to mulch something. So right down that bed, that bed, that bed. So I'm on the way up here. You know, I am saving these. This is the American Cress that I'm saving while well, they're forming some beautiful pods. Look at those. Some of the ones quite low down are really quite fat. So these, when they're ready, will just spring open and they'll be absolutely stuffed full of tiny seed. Um, I'm gonna have to be careful to catch them on time. Otherwise this whole area is going to be mustard cress. Not mustard cress, <laughs> American cress. We've got squirrels having a fight at the moment. Territory wars, here comes another one. <laughs> they are like, they're just leaping over everything at the moment, like trying to fight for territory. Anyway, so we've got radishes. We could put another row of radishes in. I've got to sow some rocket. That's another row of coriander. Put all the radishes over there because I think we've got a couple. Do we want to do the mums too? Um, is that that yellow one? Yeah. Really tall one. Yeah. I'm going to sow a chocha today. Right, okay. That's, That's definite. Yeah. Yeah, a ton of seed sowing to do. I'm just going to mix up another load of uh, compost and vermiculite. This is actually Rocket Grow seed and cutting compost and a couple of scoops of vermiculite. Give it a good mix around. So I've got quite a lot of things that I need sowing, like I just said, um, but I've been waiting as I get things out of the greenhouse to kind of free up the seed trays for me to then uh, sow more into. So it's a bit of a shuffle, really. But we've also been shuffling a lot of stuff from the greenhouse into the cold frame, which then also gives us more space in the greenhouse. So just, just a shuffle. It's a shuffle. Okay, first ones on the list are more spring onions. Just planted those ones out a couple of days ago. So these ones are going in. It's exactly the same varieties as North Holland Blood Red and uh, Evergreen Bunching. Pretty standard chaps. Still don't have any Lilia seed, which is annoying. That's the one I normally grow. I have been looking out for it, but I haven't seen it. And I've got so much seed at home. I'm like, okay, I'll just take this opportunity. So I'll just sow some of the other ones rather than racing out and buying more seed when I don't really need it. I need something. I need some little square thing to just go. Mm, 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 mm.
Right, what is next? Done the spring onions. They're being direct sown. Let's do some basil. I've got two different colors. Oh, so this will actually be my third sowing of basil so far this year, and I have nothing to show for it. <laughs> the first lot I sowed all came up. They were about, you know, yay big, just starting to get their true leaves. And I put them up onto the top shelf in the conservatory to get the most amount of light. And unfortunately that's just slightly above my eye line and I didn't see them and they dried out and they all died. The second lot I sowed, which was with uh, two different packets of seed, uh, not a single one came up, not a jot. Uh, so this is round number three. I'm opening fresh seed. It's all within date and I've got high hopes. So wish me luck, purple and green. The green is just sweet green, which is the bog standard one. And then it's red Reuben. Ooh, ah, so uh, if I'd known that that was just loose seed in that huge packet, I probably would have been a little more delicate on the opening. What is that chicken doing? She's shouting her feathers out. Um, yes. Oh well, never mind. Right, let's just sew this. So these are eventually going to be growing between the tomatoes in the polytunnel. That is the aim. Uh, they normally do really fantastically well in the polytunnel because it's really humid and they just basically live their, in, their absolute best lives between the tomato and also like what a good combo tomatoes and basil mm, mm, mm. i also put the uh thai basil in there will you be quiet madam it's flow again she got problems that girl I will also be growing the Thai basil in there, although not such a good combo with the tomatoes. <laughs> um, that one is uh, was sown the first time as the first lot of basil that I sowed, and it was absolutely fine. There were, it's a lot tougher, that Thai basil, than, than the normal basil, so that survived my neglect much more happily. Uh, what do I do? Two rows of that? Yes, and I will do two rows of this. She doesn't like it when I do it back to her. Do you? No! Okay, next up, a chocha. I should have got these in about three weeks ago, but I haven't. So today is the day and I've got an extra variety of this. I've been growing this one for uh, maybe four years now. I was originally given this seed by a bloke in Yorkshire. Thank you very much, Ash. He is a keeper of chickens and ducks and now grows everything hydroponically. Uh, I don't know if he grows his achocha hydroponically actually. Yeah, anyway, irrelevant, but yeah, so I've got that one. And now this one is a smooth, small slipper type. The one that I see most people growing is one which I believe is called Fat Baby. They're quite short, fat, and they're really spiky. Not like um, hard spikes, but like the shape of them is really like whoop, 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 whoop. And this one is completely smooth and grows brilliantly outdoors. The other one that I've got is Bolivian Giant Achocha. And I believe it's also smooth, but they're big, like big and perfect for stuffing. It does say on them that uh, they're better off in a greenhouse or in a polytunnel, but I don't have any space indoors for them. So they're gonna go outside and we're gonna see how they do. Now, because I don't know what variety this original achocha I got was, I don't know whether that one is supposed to do better inside rather than outside, if you see what I mean. So they're both going outside and we will find out. They are really fast growers, Achocha, and they get tall very quickly. They're climbers, you know, so they're gonna go up one of the arches at the end. So I want to give them something to start off in that is going to be big enough for them to be in there a while, if you see what I mean, rather than like the tray that I've just put the spring onions in. How many of these am I gonna sow? So I think I'm gonna do three of each in the hope that I get two of each. 
it's probably ample because if they are successful like if it's like the um the little one that i've got they sure do produce a lot of a chocha and um, they're a funny type of fruit so they're uh, long kind of like you have to scoop the seeds out so when i'm about to sow these i'll show you what the seeds look like because they're really coarse they're like proper hard looks like bark chips almost uh, and that's inside the fruit so you really don't want to be eating them but what I found last year is that not only are they really prolific but they're actually really good for stuffing which is why I've now picked up the really large one because obviously I was trying to stuff little tiny things um, I'm hoping that when I've got a bigger chap they'll be easier to stuff that is the idea right let me show you what these seeds look like because they're quite amazing this is my saved seed. I've been saving it since that first lot that I got, but have a look at this. Oh. So they're like, yeah, they, it looks like bark chips. Actually, I'll tell you what they really remind me of. I don't know if you've ever played uh, Warhammer, little figurines uh, that kind of, you know, you have wars and terrains and stuff, but you paint the figures and these remind me because they've got little crosses on them. Can you see that? There's a good one with a really good cross. But like, can you see that? They remind me of the kind of thing that like the standard bearer at the front of the army, like is on the top of a pole for him. That's what they remind me of. Anyway, that's what's inside the fruit and you don't want to eat it because it's nasty. Um, so you hollow them out. They're always described as sort of halfway between a cucumber and a green pepper. I think if you eat them raw, they taste very watery, cucumbery. Bit of a weird texture raw though I found because the inside of them, you know like the inside of a um, broad bean case where it's furry, it's a little bit like that, which I'm not enormously enamoured with. Uh, <laughs> it's just not that nice to eat raw, to be honest. But cooking them, they go like a really delicate flavoured uh, green pepper. And you can basically jam them in anything to kind of bulk up. They're just a really handy thing to have around. They're great in stir fries, you can put them in stews, in soups, all of that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with them actually. Sometimes you start growing these things and they're a bit of a, an unknown quantity and you grow them and you think, mm, that was interesting, but I'm probably not gonna grow them again. This wasn't one of them. And actually that variety, the one I don't know what it is, loads of people on this site now grow that particular variety because i've been like handing out saved seeds so oh these ones look really quite different these are like completely black rather than standard bearer uh, bark chips these look like bits of chipped coal there's six in there i'm gonna sell all of them i'm gonna sell all of them i am two in each and hope for the best. Fantastic. Ooh, a chota is in. Do I put two more in the oven? I'm gonna do two in each pot. I just stick some more in those ones. I don't know how good the germination is gonna be, so I'll just try it. Two in each. Wonderful. this one giant Bolivian I tell you what talking of experimental things that you've never sown before Bolivian my chickpeas are up Bolivian I'm gonna put these in the greenhouse and show you the chickpeas come on have a look at these okay so this is the um this is the thai basil which came up just fine uh obviously <laughs> that's the current state of the new basil but look at this Woohoo! 
look at that. We have chickpeas. Woo! Yeah, we have chickpeas. It's quite exciting. Man, it's hot in here. We've also got beans. Have a look at these. Oh, these have come up quick. I didn't even see them. So who do we have here? We have got oh runner beans. Yes, looking lovely. Runner beans, runner beans. Greek gigantes looking great. Obviously, something's happening with the lazy housewife because it's picking the whole lot up. I'll have to give them a water. Nothing in the French bean department yet, but the runner beans are up on this end too. So woo, we are off with the beans. That is well exciting. Oh, cool down a bit. Right, what else am I going to do today? There's quite a lot of stuff to plant out, but I'm shuffling that in. Actually, mum's just been moving a load of stuff out of the greenhouse into the cold frame because we want to start getting out. Um, but they're just not really ready. They need a bit of intermediate period. <laughs> uh, yeah, what are we going to do? There's more asparagus to pick. More herbs to pick. Oh, it's just looking beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to direct sow some rocket and some radishes before we leave. Um, yeah. Gorgeous girlies. Isn't it gorgeous? It's all looking lovely. It's what a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Getting ready. Beautiful girls. Beautiful girls. Beautiful girls. You can see they've lost all of the feathers on the backs of their heads but they're actually all right now. There's no fighting. They've just kind of got their order all sorted out and you are the bald one at the moment, Margot. Yes, you are. But then so is Nutcase up there. She's also bald. The only one that actually has feathers on the back of their head is the rube. The rube still looks pristine, all the rest of them. Bald. is a pants watering can just drips it all out the side and then disturbs all the seed i'm going to go and get the hose it's better last two things to do for the day i mean oh, i really fancy staying up here for the rest of the day but i can't i've got to do things unfortunately so the last two things i'm going to do before we head off today are direct sowing i'm going to sow some rocket and i'm going to sow some radishes and then i think we're going to have to clear off sad times this is the radishes that we sowed really not very long ago and you can see they are forming radishes in there mum has been eating them She's been going past two different sorts. That was the uh, red one there, and then this one on this side should be purple, but I think it's a bit slower. Yeah. Haven't got much going on on that side just yet.
this chat. What a week. We got potatoes. <laughs> we got more asparagus than you can shake a stick at. Uh, yeah, those potatoes though, what a colour. It's like um, Red Duke of York should be called Fuchsia Duke of York. <laughs> they are such beautiful potatoes. Anyway, we ate them that night and they were as good as you can imagine a potato would be. Mm. They were extremely fine. The rest of them, so we wanted to see how that one are getting on. Obviously we put like three in pots in the greenhouse, early experiment. I think they went in in like, was it January? Might have been January, might have been February, can't remember, but it was early anyway. Um, just a bit of a test. And we've still got two more pots in there. That was quite a good gauge though, to see kind of what's probably going on on the other two. And so we need to feed them up. We need to give them a load more water because that was pretty dry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so hopefully we'll have another two buckets of potatoes with a bit more in. We'll probably leave them another three weeks a month, something like that, and then have another go. Exciting, potatoes outside are all looking good too. So yeah, but also asparagus coming out of our ears, which is just pure joy. I mean, Asparagus is one of those things that yes, so they take up space and also they take a long time to establish and before you've got any in it seems a bit like oh can I really put them in and wait three years before I get anything out of them but but just believe me they are so worthwhile having on a plot. If I was to get a new allotment now that would be one of the very first things that I put in. Because also they don't taste anything like the asparagus that you can buy in the shop. Like I, I eat asparagus for six weeks of the year and then I don't eat asparagus again until the season comes around because it's just pointless. They don't taste of anything in the shop. Like it's a whole different experience picking and eating asparagus off your plot. Honestly, I sound like I'm being sponsored by asparagus. I'm not, <laughs> I just think it's glorious. One thing I did want to mention is obviously because I've been putting a lot of brassicas out recently, you'll have seen me using that lime. For some reason, like it's a really fine powder that one, and for some reason in the video footage, it looks like I am pouring it into those holes. It doesn't look like that in real life. <laughs> it's actually, it's like a little gentle dusting in the hole, but in the, yeah, in the video, it seems to like, yeah, it looks like I'm really, really going for it. But that tiny little bag that I've got that's like this big, um, I've done all of that with it and it's barely gone down. So it's not actually as extreme as it looks in the video. That's about all there is for this week, chaps. Uh, back on with it next week. I'm hoping we've got a bit more stability in the weather. Um, what have we got to do next week? Ooh, I'm gonna start hardening off some tomatoes. So I've got big tomato update because I've got some plans for them. And what else are we doing next week? It's just kind of more of the same. Like we're just on a treadmill at the moment. Like May is a relentless month. Anyway, chaps, huge cheers to the Monday Clubbers. You know who you are and you're all marvellous because without you, uh, this wouldn't be happening at all. And also cheers to everybody else who watches throughout the week. I hope all your gardens are growing as fast as our grass is growing at the moment. It seems to me the grass grows like 10 times faster than anything else on the plot, doesn't it? Mm. Grass and weeds. <laughs> cheers, chaps, and I will see you next week.